Amen. Amen. Good morning, Central Park Baptist Church. Good morning to you all. How are we doing this morning? We doing well? Hey, man, glad to see everyone here. This is an exciting day. It's an exciting uh, uh, fifth Sunday, right? Fifth Sunday of the month. And next next week, of, uh, I guess in a couple of days, it'll be August. Can you believe that? Man, time is really flying, I tell you. Hey, man, well, we're so excited to have you here with us this morning. Now, if you're able to rise, we'd like for you to join us in singing hymn 610, hymn 610, hymn 610. For those of you who are able to rest upon your feet, we'd like for you to join us in singing hymn 610. Hymn 610. Sing along. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. He heals the brokenhearted. He heals the brokenhearted, and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted, and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted, and they cry no more. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. He gives me living water. He gives me living water, and I thirst no more. He fills my mouth with laughter. Ha 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 ha. He fills my mouth with laughter. Ha 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 ha. He fills my mouth with laughter. Ha 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 ha. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hey, Amen. We're gonna sing that one more time. Everyone had a smile on their face except one person. I'm not gonna call them out. But we're going to sing it a second time and we'll see if we can get that last person to smile because everybody else was smiling. Let's sing that again. He fills my mouth with laughter. He fills my mouth with laughter. Ha, 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 ha. He fills my mouth with laughter. Ha, 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 ha. He fills my mouth with laughter. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hey. Heavenly Father, we are grateful that you are our joyful and loving God. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us together on this day. We ask, Lord, that you would bless this gathering, and everything we do may bring honor and glory to your Son. It's in Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. And while you're standing, we'd like for you to join us in singing hymn 124, hymn 124. Hymn 124, Kneel at the Cross. Sing along, Hymn 124, here we go. I kneel at the cross, Christ will meet you there. Come while he waits for you. Listen to his voice, leave it with your care. Cross, give your eye to 
rails up, look unto rims above. Turn not away to life's sparkling cup. Trust only in His love. Amen. And then at the cross, leave every care. It sure seems like sometimes we need a little extra faith, amen. amen. Have you been struggling this week? Say amen. amen. Well, let me encourage you, just step in the light, amen. God will help you out. Hymn number 461, Stepping in the Light. Hey. Amen. Yes, sir. Hey. Hey, man. If you're able to rest upon your feet, please join us in singing hymn 461. To walk in the steps of the Savior, trying to follow our Savior and King, shaping our lives by His blessed example, 
happy, how happy the songs that we bring. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the line, stepping in the line. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, let him pass on by. Pressing more closely to him who is leading when we are tempted, turn from the way. Trusting the arm that is strong to defend us, happy, how happy our praises is dead. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, pass on light. Walking in footsteps of gentle forbearance, footsteps of faithfulness, mercy, and love. Looking to Him, the grace freely promised. Happy, how happy a journey above. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior. trying to walk in the steps of the Savior. Upward, still upward, we'll follow our God. When we shall see Him, the King, in His beauty, happy, how happy our place at His side. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the line, stepping in the line. Welcome to Central Park Baptist Church this morning. We're glad that you're here. We're excited to have so many people with us today. If you're a first-time visitor here and you did not receive a visitor card, we're glad that you're here. But if you'll slip up your hand, one of our ushers will get you a visitor card right now. If you did not get one, all right, if you did get one, then I'm going to ask you to fill it out. Keep the pen as a gift from us to you. And then after the service, out in the foyer, I'll be out there by the big sign that says welcome. If you'll give me that card, I've got a gift bag for you of things we want to give you to thank you for coming. In fact, today it's good to have the whole burrito family, uh, Dorito, uh, or the, 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 it's good to have you with us, Brother DeVito, and his family's with us today. Amen. And I asked them, uh, did you come to see your son? And they came to see Tony. Right. Amen. I get that. I get that 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You lose value as a child when the grandkids come around. That's Amen. Right. Uh, but it's good to have them with us here this morning, and it's good to have all of our visitors here today. Right, right after the service, we're going to have a potluck dinner. Amen. What does that mean? That means everybody's invited. Right. It does not matter if you brought something or didn't bring something. Right. We want you to eat with us. You say, what are we going to eat? What's ever in the pot? Amen. <laughs> and everybody's invited to come and enjoy that time. And after that time, about 1 o'clock, we're going to come back into the auditorium, and we're going to have what's called a fifth Sunday sing. Yeah. We've got a bunch of people who are going to sing. Now, I want to encourage you that between services, maybe you stop in the restroom and you fill your pockets with some uh, toilet paper and maybe... I'm going to be singing a song, so I know for sure during that time you want to make sure you got the, your ears stuffed real good. And uh, But we want to uh, invite everybody to that. It doesn't matter if you're a member here or not. We want you to be a part of that with us today at 1 o'clock. Not 2 o'clock as our normal services, but 1 o'clock, all right? I also want to remind all of our men that on August 6th, that's next Saturday at 8.30 in the morning, we'll be having our men's prayer breakfast, men's prayer breakfast. And during that prayer bre breakfast, we're going to have... A time of devotions uh, where we seriously look at the Word of God. We're going to have a time of prayer, which I think is extremely important. Without prayer, uh, we have nothing. And God hears and answers prayer. And I am thrilled. I have a God that hears my voice. He even knows my voice. He even likes it when I sing. And now you know that he's a very compassionate and merciful God. Uh, but um, he'll be... Uh, 
uh, he'll be, uh, uh, we'll be having that, that time. And then also, we'll be having breakfast, amen? You do not have to be a member of Central Park Baptist Church to come and be a part of our men's prayer breakfast. Amen. Just, amen. And, and just in case you forgot, we're going to have bacon. Amen. Now, I don't know if we're going to have anything else, but we're going to have bacon. And then when we're finished with our first course of bacon, we're going to have bacon. Hey, and then when that's done, uh, you can have a biscuit, but we're going to eat more bacon. bacon. Amen. So because that's what we do. Amen. Uh, all, next Sunday is a very special Sunday. We're going to have the Miller family with us. They're missionaries to Mexico. Right. Now, if you have never heard of them before, that's okay. Many people haven't. But they are a, a wonderful musical family. Yes, yes, yes. They will sing and play all sorts of instruments all across this platform. Is there ten of them all together? Eight, nine, nine of them? I think they got seven kids, seven kids and a mom and a dad. That's, that's nine, I think. Let me take off my shoes to count it correctly. Uh, but they'll, uh, they'll be with us next Sunday, and they're going to sing, and they're going to preach, and we're going to hear about their ministry, and they're going to take both services, both the morning service and the 2 o'clock service. And I promise you, you will not be disappointed. It is amazing what those youngins can do. They got this little guy who stands up front and he plays the mandolin. I think it's a mandolin. And he is unbelievable. I think he's like six years old. At six years old, I could barely tie my shoes. But he's just wonderful, and I want to encourage you to be a part of that uh, next week. And then um, we also have uh, uh, 22 and 22 next Sunday morning. 22 and 22. We're trying to have 22 people come be with us uh, in, in our, at uh, 8.15 in the morning to be a part of our prayer time for the year 2022. Right. Uh, and we're gathered together and we pray specifically for our services and for our people and for our visitors. Amen. God blesses prayer. And there's power in prayer. Amen. And so we all get together, men, women, everybody. We meet in the auditorium here. We, we, some sit on the, on the pew, some kneel in the front here, some even lean against the communion table, whatever you need. We want to encourage you to be here at 8.15 in the morning to be a part of our 22 in 22. And then next, su sat, next Sunday also, after our morning service, we'll be having a special choir dinner, a special meal for our choir members. Now, it's for choir members and prospective choir members. They won't let me be a prospective choir member because they know that there's only specific songs, like two or three of them in the whole world, that I could sing. But if you want to be a prospective member and you're thinking about being in the choir, we would love to have you come to that dinner as well. It's immediately following the service in our fellowship hall. And it's already planned, all the food that's going to be there and all the cooks and everything that's been involved. They're all lined up and they're looking forward to being able to provide this as a special gift of thanks to our choir. Amen. Now, if you want to be a part of our choir, there's only two real requirements that we have. You need to be a uh, church member, Central Park Baptist church member, and you need to be faithful. Amen. Amen. We need to have folks who are going to be here and counted on. I thought our choir did wonderful this morning, spectacular. They sounded great. And I want to encourage those who want to be in it, you come. You say, well, I don't sing good. Well, you don't have to sing good. Unless you sing as badly as I do, they won't. Uh, and, of course, there's other folks who are. <coughs> uh, but we'll want to encourage everybody that can to be a part uh, of that as well. We love you. We thank you for being here. And welcome to Central Park Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. And you're glad you're here. Say amen. amen. It's good to see everybody this morning. Appreciate all of our guests here today. If you don't know, we're having, I'm preaching a message today on giving our children back to God and what yes. that means and right. what that entails. And and so we have some folks here visiting with our families and they're bringing their children and we're going to, uh, we're going to, but I want people to understand you include, now this is not just for them. This right. is for you as well. Right. We can all get something out of this and, and y'all can say amen. amen. And uh, so please, uh, I'm just thankful for that, but this is going to start a series of messages on the family. And uh, which is extremely important today. If you haven't noticed, there's a lot of confusion about the makeup of a family. That's right. That's well, right. God's going to clear that up. Amen. Okay, so I want to encourage you. You be here uh, for that in, uh, in the weeks to come, and we'll be preaching some messages on that. So please pray. Wednesday night, Bible study on the book of Daniel. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar is about to, he's about to get a lesson from God. Y'all ever had one of those? 
Come, I, I know y'all said amen looking at me, but nobody raised their hand, you know. <laughs> I'll raise both of mine, so, uh, but please do not forget about that. And, uh, well, you have, ready to have a good offering, say amen. 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 Uh, let's have a good offering. And let me encourage you. And I know folks come and they bring their offering up a little bit early sometimes. But let me encourage you, bring it with, with everyone else. And there's a reason for that. You'll encourage someone else when you do that. And uh, you'll uh, and you'll be a, a source of blessing to them when they see you come. And I've had people say, "Preacher, can you put this in the offering plate for me?" And I say, "No," Amen. because I want them to receive a blessing first and foremost. But I, but in return, they'll influence someone else uh, to do the same. So I want to encourage you. You give this morning, and uh, and I thank God uh, for you being a faithful and generous giver. Let me say one more thing, real quick. I appreciate all of our Korean folks. Monaso, Monaso, Panga So, um, if you don't know what that is, ask Brother Wu Jin. He'll tell you. If you want to know what that is, practice it, and then you can say it too, okay? <laughs> but this is their first Sunday for their worship service, and, and I'm thankful for our Korean folks being here today. You, you be a blessing to them. Amen. Father, help us this morning as we come to our offering, God, and uh, this is a just as much a part of worship as anything else. And, and I pray, God, that you would speak to our hearts, Lord, and help us to be generous and cheerful givers, Lord, and understanding we're just giving back a portion of what you've already given to us. And, Lord, I pray, God, your blessings upon it. May we be, uh, Lord, good stewards of it, and may it be used for the furtherance of the cause of Christ, Lord, in this place. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have an offering, you please come. To rise, we'd like for you to join us in singing one more hymn, and this is right before we have our, our special of the day, of the morning, uh, hymn 467, hymn 467, I feel like traveling on. And after we sing this hymn, I want you to briefly greet each other, amen? Sing along. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I Let's do that last verse of hymn 467. Last verse of 467. 
The Lord has been so good to me. I feel like traveling on until that blessed home I see. I feel like traveling on. Yes, I feel like traveling on. Feel like traveling on. Heavenly home is right and fair. I feel like traveling on. Amen. You may be seated at this time. All right, amen. Amen. Well, Genesis. Genesis chapter 22. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, children's Church and Korean folks, you dismissed. Thank you. I knew I was forgetting something. We've been talking about our Korean folks having their first service this week, this morning. We, we wasn't going to let them go. <laughs> If you found your place, Genesis chapter 22, if you'll please stand in honor of reading the Word of God this morning. You know, we're only going to read about 14 verses this morning, but if you go back in Scripture, Paul read so long that they, a guy fell out of the window, or preached so long he fell out of the window and killed him. Yeah, I'm not going to read that long, okay? So you're safe. But if you do fall out, just fall on the padded pew and, and y'all just kind of wave wind on them a little bit and, you know, and we'll be through in a minute, all right? Are y'all okay? Amen. Found your place, say amen. amen. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, he said, Be, uh, behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, uh, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, rose up, and went into the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes, and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, 
Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood uh, of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire, the wood, but where's the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they, both, uh, so they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told them. Now that's important. I'm just going to throw this in here. Uh, there's always a right place for worship. There's always a chosen place for worship that God has for us. And, and we see that here. He says, And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And notice he said his name twice. You know why? Abraham was still moving. He was still going forward. And so God getting his attention, and he said, Here am I. Uh, and he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad. In other words, there's a, there's a right place for worship, but there's a right time for worship. Uh, it said, Neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Father, I pray God this morning that you would help me, Lord, to preach this message. I believe it's uh, very important, God, today that we all listen and, and understand, God, the the meaning of giving our children back to you. And, and so, God, I pray that you would help us and may each of us glean something from the word of God today, Lord, that will help us in our daily walk with you. And, Lord, we'll give you praise. Bless the reading of your word and we give you praise in the name of Jesus. We ask all these things. Amen. You may be seated. Now, we're talking about giving our children back to God. The question is, have you ever wanted to give your children back to God? Yeah, now you may be thinking, yeah, I'd like to give mine back, <laughs> but God has a no return policy. Um, you know, but as parents, we've all wanted to wrap our kids up at one time or another and, and take them back to God, special delivery. Uh, you know, uh, a boy asked his mother one time, he said, Mom, what do you want for your birthday this year? And she said, you know, son, I, I would like to have three well-behaved children. And he said, well, then there'd be six of us. <laughs> so the question is, uh, have you ever given thought to the fact that your children are precious uh, in the sight of God? They're, they're a gift from God to you and I. Uh, have you ever considered this, the fact that they ultimately belong to God first and uh, not to you and me as parents? Uh, understanding God is responsible, watch this, God is responsible for the way they were designed that's important today, amen. God is responsible for the way they were designed and, and already knows the plan and the purpose for their future. Amen. Have you considered that God has left it up to you to show them his way? You know? yeah. uh, there's a lot of examples of parents in Scripture who, who brought their children back to God and, uh, and, and handing them over to him. And, and, and uh, one example is that of Hannah uh, bringing her son Samuel back to God, a son whom she prayed for for, for a long period of time and, and presented him to God and, and handing Samuel over to Eli the priest. You can go to 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 27 and verse 28. Another example is Joseph and Mary as they brought uh, the Lord Jesus as an infant to the temple uh, following his circumcision. If you read that in Luke chapter 2, after eight days they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to God. But the example I want us to see and talk about this morning is here in Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 13. And it's the example of Abraham offering Isaac on Mount Moriah. Now, Abraham literally and totally 
gave Isaac back to God. And we can all say amen. amen. I, I don't know for certain, but I think that must have been uh, probably one of the hardest things that a parent could have ever done. Uh, I mean, if you look in, in verse 2 and in, in, in verse, chapter 22, it says, And he said, God said, speaking, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering, that's important, upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. Now, Isaac, if you remember, he, has, he was a miracle baby. He was born when Sarah was 90 and Abraham was 100 years old. How would you like to have a child at that age? Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, but try to put yourself in Abraham's shoes for just a minute. You have to understand uh, the means by which a sacrifice was made. And I'll not go into all the details, but you go and look at, and, and study uh, the process of offering a sacrifice to God for a burnt offering. I mean, here's Abraham, and uh, he takes his son, and he straps him down on an altar in a pile of wood, and, and he's raising the knife, and he's about ready to slash open his son's chest. He's about to slash open his son's throat, and he's about to cremate him. Listen, and watch his body literally, literally disintegrate on a, on a pile, into a pile of ashes. Now listen, it was, uh, a sacrifice was not something that was, you know, that was uh, uh, formed, you know, pretty. Listen, it was a gruesome task. And here's God. He's called Abraham to uh, crucify or, 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 or uh, offer as a sacrifice his son Isaac. And, and I personally, I don't know that I could do that. Uh, even if God asked me, I don't know if I could do that. Uh, but here we see Abraham. Uh, he's, he's there and he's offering his son Isaac. And if you think about this, this is literally the best thing that Abraham could have ever done for Isaac was to tie him to that altar and to surrender him back to God. The best thing he could have ever done for his son was this very thing right here. Had Abraham refused to give Isaac back to God, I believe he would have forfeited all of God's promises and plans for Isaac. Think about it. Uh, Isaac would have lived uh, and died in obscurity. I believe he would have died a nomad and a nobody. But because Abraham obeyed and gave Isaac back to God, Isaac received the fullness of God's best plan and promise for his life. Isaac became a wealthy man. Isaac became the forefather of God's own son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaac's life is still having an impact literally on millions of people even today simply because Abraham was obedient. And there's four things that I want you to see real quick. I've got about 25 minutes, so I want you to listen quickly. Four elements of giving your child back to God. First, giving your child to God is a confirmation of your love to God of your love for God. The first thing you're saying when you give your child back to God is that you love God even more than you love that child. Amen. And by the way, that child is made in the image of God. If you go back and read Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2, and you'll find that. Listen, that child is a prize, and he is a precious possession. And let's all say Amen. Uh, it, it, however, you can't allow the child to take the place of God. Right. Amen. Right. When you give your child back to God, you're saying that you want the very best for that child. Yeah. It means giving that child a, a spanking if they need it. Yeah. Oh, that's not popular, preacher. Yeah, yeah. That's offensive. Yeah. Bummer. <laughs> um, it means discipline. It means placing limitations on that child. It means that you, dad, and mom, that you're even willing to change your life for their benefit. Yeah. Uh, many parents today who give their child back to God do so, and then they want God to do all the work. But parents and grandparents, you and I, we have a responsibility in this matter, just like the, I mean, just like anyone else, just like the, the mom and the dad. Uh, you're saying that when you give your child back to God that you're willing to do whatever it takes. And this is exactly what Abraham proved by his willingness to offer Isaac. He was demonstrating that his love and fear of God were supreme in his life above everything else. 
Abraham loved God above the most prized treasure of his life, and that's his only son. Listen, they, they'd been asking God for this for years, and they thought that they were all already past childbearing years. They thought it was over. But listen, God is a God of his word. And so he gives Abraham and Isaac a son, and God re reminds us, your only son, Isaac. In fact, it turned to chap Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, I want you to look at verse 37 and verse 38. We're talking about giving your child to God as a confirmation of your love for God. And Abraham loved God above the most prized treasure of his life, and that's his only son, Isaac. Matthew chapter 10, verse 37 and verse 38. You found your place. Say amen. amen. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Listen, love of one's own life is often the greatest hindrance to the, uh, to the full commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. But giving our children back to God is saying and it's confirming that we love God above everything else. Number two, giving your children back to God is a clarification of ownership. Amen. Uh, when you give your child back to God, you're openly saying and declaring that this child is a gift from God. Now, we got verses. I got Bible for this. It's just not my opinion, okay? Listen, uh, I want you to understand that when we, when we stand here, when we talk about the things of God, it's not, a, it's not about opinion. It's not about what I think or whether I agree. No, it's about right here. We have to have a source of authority, and this is our source. Amen. So giving your child back to God, you're openly declaring that the child is a gift from God. You're openly declaring that this child does not really belong to you. You are openly declaring that this child belongs to God and that you have the privilege to love and train this child, but this child is not yours, but it's God's. It's, listen, giving your child back to God is a clarification of ownership. Amen. Listen, I, I believe this was on Abraham's mind when he was laying Isaac on that altar that day. I believe Abraham was saying, Lord, this young man belongs to you. You do with him as you please. He's yours. He's not mine. Amen. And folks, our children, as we raise them, they belong to God, and we have to remember that. They're precious. Uh, they're a gift from God, and they're a gift. They, they're on loan to you and I. Psalm chapter 127 and verse 3, it says, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Children are a heritage, which means, that, that, which means to extend our name and our blood into the next generation is a part of God's blessing and a promise to you and me. That word heritage is the same Hebrew word in the Old Testament, which means inheritance. And this inheritance from God, our children, listen, their value is far beyond anything in this world. Amen. And we had better be careful how we treat and care for God's property. Amen. There's a lot of people today that are doing a lot of wicked things to children today, and they're going to answer to God for that. Right. Why? Because that is God's property Amen. on loan to you and I. I don't want to get on the soapbox on that, but I could, amen. And, but listen, uh, God help us. Children today are just, they're, they, they become throwaway. Um, I'm not going to get all over that. I've only got 20 minutes. But listen, I'm thankful for the abortion laws that were passed. Regardless of what uh, government says, or listen, we already had that law written in the Word of God thousands of years ago. Children are heritage, a fruit of the womb, a precious gift. And by the way, and now you, you may have to put your seatbelt on a little bit, and I understand the necessity of these things. I, I get it. But I want you to listen. God did not authorize the state to raise our children. He, neither did he authorize daycare centers or school systems. And, and again, I understand the need of those things. Don't misunderstand uh, but listen, God didn't raise our and put our politicians in, in charge of our children either. And regardless of what they say, watch, it does not take a village to raise our kids. It takes a godly dad and a godly mom to raise children. Amen. Uh, 
Uh, giving your children to God is a confirmation uh, that you love God above anything else. That's right. It's a confirmation that or a clarification of ownership to God. Yeah. But giving your child, number three, to God is also a commitment. Yes, sir. Look in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. I'll give you a minute, a few seconds. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4, it says that we're to bring up our children, watch, in the nurture and in the admonition of the Lord. Amen. To give your child to God is not just a ceremony. Right. Amen. Okay? Yeah. And God help us. I'm, I'm fearful that too many uh, young couples and parents today, they, they just want to go through the ceremony and uh, and, and think that the ceremony of, of dedicating our children back to God is some type of a fix-all. It is not. Right. It means some things. Uh, and we're going through that this morning. Listen, it's a commitment that you're going to be a godly parent. Right. Amen. Amen. That's right. That you, that each of us will be right with God and that we will do our best to stay right with God and live a godly lifestyle. Yeah. That's what this means. Yeah. It's a commitment. It means that you'll keep your child in church with you. Amen. That you will love your child. And, and part of loving your child is uh, taking them to church with you. Listen, just as it was with my mom and dad, it was the same in my house. Uh, listen, going to church was not an option. You know, there was not an option period there on whether we had to decide whether we were going to go. I was talking to my wife about this the other day, and and uh, one of my kids, uh, I, I won't tell you which one, they're not here today, by the way, I'll give you that, but they they got to where they didn't want to go to school anymore, and you know, and it, you know, I mean, we talked through that, and my wife was dealing with this, and and then uh, one of them came up and said that, you know, that went on for a couple of weeks, and we fought that fight, y'all y'all know what I'm talking about, uh, we fought that fight, and then uh, after a few weeks, it, it kind of... Uh, uh, morphed into, I don't want to go to church anymore. Why don't I go to church anymore? Well, I, I, I was in the living room and my wife was upstairs with the kids and, and I heard a commotion up there. And the commotion was about whether they were going to go to church or not. Well, you know what? We never had to have, we never worried about that or had that conversation after that day. You know why? Because there was no discussion about going to church. That's what we did. And that, listen, why? Because I, I dedicated my children back to God when they were small. And I said, listen, then, uh, this is what it's going to take. And we're going to go to church when the doors are open. And you're going to go too. Yes, Amen. Amen. Uh, it's a commitment that we will take our children to church with us. But it's also... A commitment that we will love our child and part of loving our children is to discipline them. That's not an easy thing to do, by the way. Uh, I don't like to discipline my kids. I never, and by the way, if you have four kids, you can discipline each one of them different. They're all different. Amen. Sometimes you don't got to do much. Sometimes you can just get a stern look or a, or a stern voice and that, that'll take care of it. But sometimes it, ha it moves into a little different area where the Board of Education is applied to the seat of knowledge. Amen. Amen. Uh, but, but if you love your child, I've had people say, Preacher, I love my child too much to spank them. No, that's not what God said. It's not easy, but it's necessary. Uh, to, to love your child is to commit to pray for your child. Listen, I pray for my kids every day. Some days I don't want to. Some days I want to give them back. Even now, they're grown and they have families of their own. And, they, you know, some days I'm just saying, Lord, uh, you know, never mind. Uh, but, you know, that's a parent. You know, being a parent never goes away. Uh, and we promise to pray for our children. But when they're little, we also promise to train them and to make our home a godly and a holy home. I believe every child has a right to have a godly parent Amen. and to Amen. live in a home that's holy. Amen. I had that privilege. Some of you may not have had that privilege. Can I challenge you? If you have kids, give it to them. 
Now give it to them. Uh, make your home a godly home. Amen. Giving your child back to God does not say, here they are, God. Take care of them. No, that's not what that is. No, it means that you'll come alongside God and that you'll do some of the work yourself. Yeah. That you'll put away a worldly lifestyle and, and, and a worldly life and, and you'll live the way God wants you to live. And I was getting quiet. A preacher, I'm all in them other ones, you know, man. It comes, I'm all in that spanking stuff, man. I can just, you know, I'm all in praying for them. I can do all that. But now you're talking about that I have to do something. Wait a minute, you're the parent. Um, you're saying that you'll, you'll live godly, that you'll pray for your child earnestly, fervently. And, and folks, listen, this ceremony and all those like it will mean nothing. If you, if we as parents aren't making a sincere, lifelong commitment to raise our children in God's way. Amen. Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 and 15. Uh, turn over there, I want you to see this. Joshua. And look in verse chapter 24. And look in verse 14 and 15. Found your place, Amen. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil to you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you'll serve, whether the gods which your father uh, which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but Joshua says, as far as me and my house go, we'll serve the Lord. Amen. Joshua's saying, you know, I want my family to turn out right. Yes. And so as a parent, I'm going to start them out right and lead them the way that they ought to go. Um, not, you know, you go over there and you do that. You know, we have a tendency as parents to do those things, you know. Uh, not... You you go to, you go to church now. You be there, church. Don't you be like a church. And then parents stay at home. No, it's you follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Amen. That's the kind of commitment that God's looking for as a, right. a, a and us as parents, even as grandparents. Grandparents, we we can be as a big impact on our grandchildren and, and on our our kids' children as they are. We can help them. Amen. Hey man, it, it's a. I mean, it, it's a family thing. You know what it's like to raise kids. And, you know, there, there was only one book to give us to help us raise our children, and it's here. Yeah. There hadn't been any, any of them. They don't come with an instruction. Well, they did come with an instruction booklet. It's right here. Uh, I mean, so when that child grows up, and, and watch, when that child grows up and they get out on their own, you pray to God that they'll make godly decisions and godly choices and choose the way that God leads them. That's, I still pray that today. I pray for my kids and say, God, help them to make godly decisions and godly choices. Listen, when you give your child back to God, it involves confirmation. It involves clarification. It involves commitment. And it also involves claiming of God's plan and promise for the life of that child. Look in, chapter, look in Genesis back there in chapter 22, verses 15 through 18. That, are you there? Say amen. amen. Beginning verse 15 says, And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, uh, By myself I have sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not uh, withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice Amen. listen your children are blessed by your obedience to God and cursed by your disobedience to God you see they've got a free will but I believe that as a parent that you stack the odds in their favor when you live for God. Right. Or you're going to stack the odds against them by not living for God. Right. I believe with all my heart that I've received, I've received blessings in my life as a, as a pastor, 
uh, as a preacher that many of the blessings that I have been given today are because of a godly mother and a godly daddy who prayed for me. And they did, they did their best to do what was right. Listen, did they make mistakes? Yes, they're made out of this. But they did their best to lead us and, and my brothers and my sister in the, in the way that they ought to live. And, and I believe I'm here today because of a godly mother and a godly father. I believe I have been, I was blessed with, with some, uh, the ministry there in Pampa and the ministry here in this church in a, in a lot of more ways than you realize. Uh, but just because of a mother and a dad who served God and did what God wanted them to do. I'm blessed today, and listen, and you will be a, listen, you'll bring blessings upon your children simply by being obedient and living right in the eyes of Almighty God. Amen. And we can all say, amen. amen. You see, as you obey God with your life, and as you give that child back to God, then listen, you're posturing that child to receive God's very best for their life. Proverbs 22 and verse 6, it says this, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he'll not depart from it. Now, now listen to me. Uh, this is probably the best known proverb on, on the raising of your children. But it's also the most misunderstood proverb. Uh, it states a simple truth that parents need to remember that uh, as they teach and discipline their children, it's the duty of parents to start their children on the right path in life. Bless, I, I feel badly for a lot of children today because they have parents who have not started them out on the right path. Yeah. Um, I mean, and by the way, it's our job to do that till they move out on their own. Okay. I mean, you know, y'all have heard, y'all heard the story. As long as you live in my house, eat my groceries, put your feet under my table. Yep, I've, I've had that discussion with my kids. You know, they, uh, they, they've all, they used to say, Daddy, if, if I clean my room, can I get an allowance? I said, why do I have to pay you to clean up something you messed up? I do pay you. I, I pay your electric bill. I pay for your groceries. Come on, parents. Amen. If y'all had not got there, you're going to get there. Yeah. Amen. When they're old, simply states they will not be able to depart from the training that we give them. That word way there in that verse, it's used repeatedly throughout Proverbs, and it's to indicate a chosen path of life. Now, there's only two possible paths mentioned in the book of Proverbs. It's the path of righteousness and wisdom, which leads to life, and the path of wickedness and foolishness that leads to death. Now, the right way or the way a, a, a child should go is obviously the way of righteousness, and we can all say amen. amen. And when reading this Proverbs, it's crucial to understand exactly what it's teaching. Listen, parents uh, 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 are to start a child in the right way, the path of righteousness. And parents, listen, uh, uh, we're to begin their training in the earliest years of life. Listen, when my kids were little, uh, I mean, even in the womb, and, and they were... I mean, Sherry would walk around, and she's out here, and I would get a, a paper towel roll. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the, the cardboard part in the middle. Yeah. And I'd stick it on her belly, and I would say, Jesus loves me, this I know. Why? Because, listen, it's never too soon to start. Listen, start soon. Start early. But listen, don't stop after it gets, listen, it's going to get a little difficult, but don't stop. Listen, our, we, our children know so much about everything nowadays, all kinds of sports, all kinds of this, all kinds of that. Listen, but they know very little about the Word of Almighty God. Teach them the Word of God today. Raise them up in their way of righteousness. My grandkids, when they come over, I still sing to them. Listen, it's, it's our responsibility to start them off right. And the point is simply this, that the reference to a child never leaving watch or never departing from, from the way refers to the initial training given by the parents, not the right way of life. Now watch this. Also remember, it's a proverb. Are you still with me? And proverbs are not absolutes. 
Uh, they express principles that are ge that are generally true in life. Now I want to reach because I got to get through. Many parents have been disappointed in, in God, and they've even questioned uh, God's word because they've not been taught the proper meaning of this proverb. They have mistakenly understood that this, when it says, "If you'll train them up in the way they should go, and they'll grow old, they'll not depart," they take that as a guarantee. It is not a guarantee. It's not, a, it's not an absolute, but if you train their, your child in the way of God, listen, it's not saying that they will never stray from the path of righteousness. This is not the meaning. Parents, we, as parents, and you young parents today, listen, it's your responsibility to start your children toward the path of righteousness. But Proverbs clearly teaches that every individual chooses for him or herself. Listen, every child has to choose whether or not they're going to take the right path, listen, or the path of the flesh and the path of the world. They have to choose. How many times have we as parents wanted to choose for our children because we see them go on a wrong path and we say, listen, and we try to tell them, hey, don't do that. Hey, you're headed in the wrong way. You're not headed. Listen, I didn't teach you that. You didn't grow up that way. We, listen, we can all say amen to that. But listen, but they have to choose. But we need to give them the tools they need to make a godly decision. Amen. Each child has to choose. They may choose not to live by it, but they can't get away from it. Not entirely. There's things that my mom and dad taught me, I still... It has been... I mean, drilled into my subconscious. I'm telling you, I've been brainwashed. Yeah. yeah. But listen, is it brainwashing when it's the Word of God? Amen. I, 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 can, I, I went and saw my mom and dad a Thursday, and man, and, and I, I can still hear my mama's voice in my head. Tell, I, I told my son this the other day. I said, son... Remember this, be sure your sin will find you. And I'm going, I thought, man, alive, mom, is that, did I, that sounded just like my mother. You know what? Train them up. They may not choose, but they'll never get away from it. The training they received is permanently inscribed on their hearts and on their minds. And even in old age, they'll remember what their parents taught them. I can still hear my parents' voice in my mind just as clear as I did when I was living at home. And listen, and, and, I, and you know what? I, I, it was always something coming from the Word of God. Amen. I still remember that. I, I believe with all my heart, you'll, you could never convince me otherwise that the only reason I'm here today is because of a mom and a dad that raised me up and nurtured me in the admonition of God. Because I didn't take the right path a lot. I chose. And I chose wrong. But in the back of my mind. There's that still small voice of the Holy Spirit of God. That always said. What you doing? How come you're not on the path? You, you were taught better than that. Oh, but God, I'm, I'm, you know, that's all, that my mom and daddy, they just didn't have a clue. They're dumb as a box of rocks. I just, I'm not going to go that way. I don't, I don't agree with that. But did that change the Holy Spirit? Not a bit. And here I am now, 63, just about. And I'm still doing the thing. I can still hear the voices of my parents as they quote the word of God to me. And I'm here today because of that. You know why? Because they started me out on the right path. Listen, when parents teach their children to live righteously, they instill in them something that will stay with them the rest of their life. That's the meaning of that proverb. And this is exactly what took place when Abraham took Isaac up to Mount Moriah. 
laid him on that altar and raised the knife to slay him as a, as a burnt sacrifice to God. That's exactly what he was doing. He was confirming his love and fear of Jehovah. He was clarifying that Isaac really belonged to God. He was committing to be a godly parent. And he was claiming God's plan and promises for Isaac. That's what you do when you give your child back to God. You see, it's not all God and, and me nothing. It's not even 50-50. It's 100% both ways. And listen, a ceremony is just a ceremony. But the real meaning is in right in here in our hearts and how we commit to God. And when you give your children back to God, you're clarifying these four things. Listen, as this ceremony will not guarantee them their place in heaven. It will not. Giving your child back to God, uh, listen, has as much, listen, it, it has about as much, uh, how can I say this? It'll, it'll get them about as far, as close to heaven as trust and baptism yeah. alone. Yeah. Same. Uh, it'll not get them into heaven. But it will as a parent. Listen, it'll, it'll bring us into accountability to God. And, and we will step alongside God and we'll say, Lord, with your help, I'm going to do my best to live a godly life and raise my children in the nurture and admonition of God to the best of my ability. And I'm going to start them out on the right path. Now, they may not stay on it, but as long as they're in my house, we'll serve God. Listen, some of us, Maybe some of you, I should say, maybe you have gotten off your path. The same things, the same things hold true for even when we are empty nesters, we still ought to have that commitment to have a right relationship with God, commit our way to Him. Amen. And make a commitment to Him that we're going to do our best to live a righteous and a holy life. You know, when my kids come to my house, I still want them to come to a place where uh, the presence of God dwells. Yeah. When my grandkids come over, you know, they come and they do their thing. Well, I'm a grandparent, you know. I mean, hey, they get to do stuff my kids didn't get to do. Yeah. yeah. But the thing I'm going to do is I'm still going to sing every once in a while, Jesus loves me, this I know. Or I'm going to sing the B-I-B-L, all preacher. Oh, they're just, no, those got some good doctrine in them. Amen. Yeah. But I'm going to do my best to come alongside my children and help them to raise their kids. And all God's people can say, amen. amen. Now we're going to give an invitation. Maybe the Lord's touched your heart about something. Maybe you're not living right. Maybe you need to come and talk to God. But for you parents... This morning, who's who has children, babies? If you'll say, "I that I'll come alongside and I'll commit and give my children to God and I'll and I'll agree to these four things," then I want them to come too, and then we're going to have prayer with them and ask God to help them. And all God's people can say, "Amen." Amen. Father, help us this morning. I pray God for our young parents today, Lord help. How important it is, Lord, that we, when we dedicate or when we give our children back to you, we understand the importance of it. Lord, we have several families here today, God, that have children that they want to give back to you. And God, I pray for them this morning that they'll understand the importance of it. Lord, maybe there's somebody here today that's not saved. Lord, Isaac is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, how he, Lord, how Jesus gave himself and Lord, for as a sacrifice for mankind, died on the cross for our sin so that we could have eternal, everlasting life. God, help us, Lord, this morning. There's somebody here today that's not saved. I pray, Father, that they'll come. Maybe that Christian, Lord, who's God gotten off of the right path, the path of righteousness. Lord, I pray, God, that they'll come today and just do business with you. Father, help us, Lord, in a special way. 
Pray, God, that you'd give this invitation, speak to our heart, because in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. While we stand and while we sing a verse of invitation, if the Lord's speaking to your heart, let me encourage you, you come right now while we sing. Mom and Dad, if you're bringing your children, I want to encourage you, you go ahead and come. Come on right now while we sing. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. Walk, you need to come. While we sing another verse, while these are here, for it speak it to your heart, you come. come have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now. Sing that verse with them. Let's sing that first verse. Have thine own way. Sing it with them. Have, Have thine, thine own way. way.